Blacksit family, Blacksit family, Blacksit family. How you doing? <laughs> I hope you're fine. Um, for anyone that's new to the channel, I'm Juliet and I'm your host for today. And uh, welcome to Blacksit. Blacksit is all about your relocation and repatriation back to the motherland. And so um, we're Black Sit, we're a family who have repatriated and uh, we're based here in the smiling coast of the beautiful and wonderful Republic of the Gambia on the west coast of Africa. And um, we're encouraging you all to come home to Africa. It's the best move we have made. And so one of the things you're gonna have to do when you're coming back to the motherland is to bring your stuff, yeah? And listen, I hope you like my fan. This is a, 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 a new present I just got from Troy and it's really super cool. So if you're wondering, has Juliet gone sci-fi on us? <laughs> Juliet's just keeping cool, staying cool. Anyway, so today I've got some great guests with me. I have a brother from another mother from here on the motherland. And I have a brother from another mother there in the UK, KKK. <laughs> and so I'm gonna ask them to, in their own way, introduce themselves to the Blacksit family. So Blacksit family, thank you for watching. Thank you for sharing and for uh, being a part of this whole exodus back to the motherland. So. I'm gonna ask you to introduce yourselves and then we're gonna get into the topic of why you're here. So um, I'm gonna start with um, Lamin to my left, go ahead. Hello everyone, um, my name is Lamin, I'm Lamin Barrow. Um, I'm living in the UK right now, I'm in Reading. Um, thanks for Juliet to have me on um, Black Seed Family today. I'm a keen follower, I'm so happy to be here today. Yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you. That was Troy just then. If anyone's a, a keen Black Sit follower, they would know that um, Troy has been here a few times and uh, he's an avid droner as well. So he's going to teach us how to drone. Come and say hi to the Black Sit family, Troy. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Troy's back. Right yeah, I love it. Nice, I love right? it. I told you Troy got me this. So say hi. How so is everyone? Troy's here to set up his business yep. and to sort out That's his land projects and his agricultural projects. So I got I got another piece of land and then the piece that I'm getting that I got uh, that I had. So I got like about six spots actually. What are we today? We're talking about shipping and um, we're oh. talking about people coming over. Have I just spoiled it? But let's introduce um, our other guest who's also in the UK. Now the reason why I put you both UK. on. Yeah, he's I Gambian. Mean, he's Gambian, but he's in the He's UK. Gambian, and he's got the same surname as His Excellency Adama, the Adama. president of the... <laughs> yeah. His Excellency Adama <laughs> Barrow. Who is the brother at the bottom? <laughs> and the brother at the bottom. This is Edmund. Edmund. And, yeah, Edmund was here. Edmund's just left, actually, the Where Gambia. He? And he's doing phenomenal work. So I'm not even going to go into detail. This brother is from another planet. Dude. Now. What he mean? achieved here in a short space of time, yeah? He has to be from somewhere I else. feel you. <laughs> uh, you know what? When I come, I'm, I'm, I've been here for three days. And I'm yeah. trying to get everything done. Yeah. Because, you, you know, here you have to... He's one of the hardest workers I know. He came to Gambia for a few days, the amount of things he got done in a few days. And that's why I say the potential is all here. Share with us um, about yourself a bit, Edmund, and introduce yourself to the Black Sit family. Right, evening Black Sit family. My name's Edmund, Edmund Yandu. Um, I'm currently in London. I was in the Gambia for five months. Funny enough, um, I'm an entrepreneur, working in construction, in terms of um, acquiring construction equipment, building small roads, all small towns, digging and all everything that involves kind of road constructions, I'm involved. But today we're talking about shipping, which is another venture. Obviously, I used to be involved in shipping many years ago, but I used to be to the Congo, and now we're talking about doing it today on the Gambia. 
As I said, I met Judy over there. Lovely, lovely lady. Obviously, we've got plans to do big, big, big things out there. So we're here to talk about shipping and strictly shipping without swaying too much. Yeah, we're going to talk about shipping. So what we're going to do is talk to both of you because we have so many people coming. Yeah, it is just, it is just phenomenal. So I want to talk to Edmund's experience um, from, you know, working in shipping for a long time in the UK. And Lamin, I want to talk to your experience of uh, you establishing your organization and your company. And uh, I want to talk about services uh, that can be offered um, for Black Sit subscribers that are shipping here um, from the UK. We are going to do a program about the US. Do you know somebody. you got somebody? I ship a barrel every month. Hey, so come on, tell us about your person in the US then. So the, the actually is uh, Gambian. And I've been shipping uh, since, the, since the corona, right before the coronavirus started, I was shipping. So I've been shipping, I ship a barrel a month. And um, it's, it's, to me, I think it's inexpensive. I had, it was another sister who's here. Um, she shipped two barrels at one time. I mean, it, it's, it's uh, one, the 55 gallon barrel is 100, 150 and then the 75 is 200. And it usually takes about six weeks to get here. I ha actually I have two barrels. I beat them here. Something happened, and um, they'll be coming. It's not. It's not through anyone's fault. It's just that it's it's backed up. So yeah. um, my barrel should be here like next week. I know one is coming on. It's coming tomorrow. It'll be unloaded tomorrow. But um, yeah, he does containers. He does barrels. You know, um, I could give his. Yeah, we'll give his details. So we got someone from the US. So now we've done. The We've done at least some of it. So, so tell me, um, Lamin, um, about do you do just do the UK or do you do Europe as well? Like, you know, France, Italy, Spain, because we have people that are obviously um, repatriating uh, from Europe as, as well as the UK. So tell us a bit of background about you and your company. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Um, thank you very much. Um, Eventually, um, hopefully, eventually we will try uh, and expand to uh, Europe. Well, however, you know, for now we are doing the UK. Um, anywhere in the UK, um, we can collect. Um, of course, uh, ship to Gambia. Right. My company is called K and M Shipping. Um, I used to have a Manju Shipping, and a brother of mine has a Kosikana. Um, Kosi Kana um, and I joined together and formed K&M Sipping. Um, so we are now uh, jointly in uh, Sipping from the, from the UK uh, to the Gambia. We've, I have personally started three years ago. And of yeah. course, my uh, brother joined me um, a year ago. So three years ago since I started. Okay, so... I want to um, basically also introduce you to Edmund because Edmund has been um, involved in shipping for a long time. And so we're going to talk about right. some of the issues that people might encounter when shipping and what they need to prepare for as well. So Edmund, would you like to give us a bit of background into, you know, your shipping experience and, um, you know, some, some idea of uh, how you got into shipping? Yeah, sure. Um, of course. Thanks. I run company called me shipping with a fellow friend of in the uk mainly london and um, the democratic republic of congo so he run for about two and a half years but then obviously i've worked alongside shipping um shipping companies and stuff so we say i know in terms of clearance paper paperwork and the logistics of things so i understand that um the concept that i want to adopt um is to be well structured and organized, and I think we were talking last time about having a um, a depot, not not a depot, it's a storage place close to a container, purely purely because um, to sort the logistics is obviously shipping is straightforward if it's simplified rather than making it complicated. Because I think what a lot of people tend to do is collect goods and then not have. Uh, a place to store it and it just becomes all complicated once if you've got storage you've got a place where because obviously the turning time between loading a container and 
getting it off and that's something that you're getting off the ground it's, it's about three hours that a shipping company gives you which is not enough if you've got fruff around and do it so it's best to always have a storage place it's, yeah. it's a lot cheaper i mean you can you're paying a lot of money for them to put it on the ground lift it the all up obviously if you've got storage and you know the day that they come in to collect it then you can put all your stuff in a container and get it moving um another thing also I think that there's something that's important is to obviously you had your gentleman that I was talking about barrels. Obviously, I used to do strictly barrels and boxes. Okay, for one container and another container, that's when people can bring their fridges, everything that's packed in order. Because if not, it becomes a bit messy. You know, yeah. and I think to me, I think it's important that um, things run smoothly and people get their things without too much aggro application. So I think at the end of the day, my idea would be anything, obviously we could ship anything, mainly boxes and barrels and anything that separate, like sofas, fridges, or a lot, we can put that in a different apartment just not to complicate things, depending on the volume of things that we've got, just to simplify things. That's my idea. That's the way I'd go with it. Straightforward, if it's not simplified, and I'll say to you, I've done That's it enough and I've got it. Simplify it and make it less stressful. For everybody. That's why I said I'm, 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 I'm happy with the streamlining and the simplification. I was very fortunate. I worked with a, another um, Ghanaian company, actually, that was based in the UK, and, and they were very helpful. But at the same time, I found it stressful. So that's the reason why we're doing this show, because a lot of people who are going to be shipping, because we didn't have any experience of it before. And so the idea is that, you know, you two lovely men, yeah, are able to offer um, Black Sit subscribers and also, you know, anybody who views this video, a good insight into the process. So, Lammy, I want you to talk me through, yes. yeah? Um, let's just right. say I've decided I'm going to Black Sit. That is it. I've had enough of the UK. I don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> I want to come back to the motherland. And I'm coming back to, to Gambia and I've got my flat and my flat is full of stuff. So what's your advice to me? Right. Um, just like your man said there, you know, um, it's not that straightforward. However, um, you, you know, as a sipper, you always want um, your customers to have their stuff um, with them. Um, as they give it to you. So what we do at KNM Sipping is um, provide you uh, with some boxes and barrels as well if you request them. Um, if we give you barrels, we also will give you, um, we will have a wrapping paper and everything, you know, for boxes because boxes tend to uh, break in the container because they're, they're not very strong. But we have the pallet wrap uh, plastic packs, you know, and of course some bubble wraps for fragile stuffs. Uh, to help you pack everything together. Uh, and then we collect them for you, bring them to our store and um, get ourselves a container, uh, fill it up and then um, sip it to the Gambia. But if you call us and then let us know what you have, um, we, got, we get to your house and have a look on what you get, then we will advise you on what to do and how we think it's going to be safer for your stuffs to get uh, to the Gambia safely. Now, it's going to be entirely up to you. Because okay. all the stuffs we are going to provide okay. you to get your stuffs safe, um, of course we have to pay for them. So we'll tell you how much you are going to pay us. The extra you're gonna you're gonna pay us for us to put them together like that, or you pack them the way you like it. But preferably, if you give it to us, then we know how to do it properly, and then uh, get them in the country and send them for you. Absolutely. Okay. So Put on. I'm gonna come to you now, Edmonds. Yeah, I'd like to ask, can you explain about a bill of lading? Um, can you also explain about pack testing and what the process is? And in terms of having an itemized um, list um, with regard to, for example, when you're doing a container, it's simple enough with a barrel because you're putting less stuff in there or a box. But say, for example, I wanted to put, you know, I've got a lot of stuff in my flat. And um, I need half, yeah, half, half a container. I don't need a full container because my flat's not that big, yeah? 
So I just got like one bed and some, some sofas and a wardrobe and what have you. Can you explain to us logistical um, aspects of what we, paperwork we have to complete and um, what we have to do with electricals or anything like that and, and, and what the process is and what, what are we allowed to ship and what aren't we allowed to ship? Well, to, to be fair and to simplify it, in terms of a bill of lading, the bill of lading is a document that's issued to acknowledge receipt of what the goods, the, the goods that a carrier is going to take on. So I, if I'm taking, I'm taking 100 people's stuff, I love the bill of lading because obviously everybody don't get a bill of lading. So it's not anything that anybody needs to really know about or worry about because the bill of lading is the person that's shipping the shipper that the person that's responsible for the shipping that holds a bill of lading that will have the list of everything that's been, that's been shipped. So obviously I think in terms of documentation, there's a lot of jargons that goes into it that the clients don't really need to know. Obviously it's important for them to understand it, but unless they're shipping it themselves, if you want the people that are shipping to take care of it, obviously they'll come around and advise you on the best way that they can ship your goods with your goods getting there. And I think if you follow the advice, then it's, we take on the responsibility more rather than you doing it mm-hmm. your own self. Because then again, when if your things break, because they're not boxed up properly or you haven't followed the advice, then you can't really come to the people that have shipped your goods and start complaining because yeah. obviously you've been advised. And, and I think that it's taking that advice on board just makes things a lot easier because obviously they're well equipped to package things in a, in a way that they experience to package them and, um, and ship them safely so that you can get your goods in one piece in a, in a nutshell. So I think in the day compliance, so a lot of people would probably think everybody should know what they're doing. As I said, if it's a big move, then treat it accordingly like a big move. Don't disrespect the move that you're about to do. You're coming to the motherland, that should come at any cost. You respect it. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So when I was uh, packing to come, I'm just going to give a few tips. One of the things that benefited me, especially uh, when coming, was having a great itemized list and boxing labeling system. So I itemized almost every single item that I shipped and I put it into categories. So for example, if I had books, I would put all the books, I would just count all the books, put them into a box. So the box might be B1 for books. So I knew when I saw B1, I knew automatically it was books, yeah? access easily the things that I used. Now, one of the things that I did do was that I bought one of my containers so that I could use it for storage when I came here, because obviously I was renting uh, when I initially came. So I'm not going to put everything into a rented house. And so um, I'm over to you, Lammy, now. One of the things we brought along was a car. So a lot of people are going to ask me a lot of questions about cars. So what I'd like to know is um, I want to sh- across a car. Now, uh, Gambia is obviously driving on the opposite side of the road. Can I still ship my car and maybe change it over? Or what would you recommend I do? Or do I look for a left-hand drive car? And is there any limitation with regard to the age of car that I can ship to the Gambia? First of all, with the limitation of the age, not in the Gambia yet. I understand some West African countries or um, places like Ghana, I think, there, there is an age restriction, but Gambia, not yet. Um, okay, the, 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 the car you want to send is entirely going to be your choice. You can send the right-hand drive car or you go and buy in Europe and send it. However, I do know people from my three years experience, people are buying right-hand drive and when they get to Gambia, they will change the steering to the left side. Yeah. Now, we got mechanics in the Gambia who can do it. I haven't, I haven't changed one personally. I bought a L200, I sent it to Gambia, but somebody bought it off me and they gave, it, they gave me a land. So I have not involved in it. However, I've seen lots of people who has done it and they have never complained um, for once that, you know, they have any trouble with it. Right. When you're sending a car, mm-hmm. cars and, you know, they depend uh, the sizes, you know, we charge according to the size of the car. If it's a small car, we got a price for it. If they are four by fours, we got prices for it. Now, oh, you don't need any paperwork. Like um, Edmund was saying, this all goes on the bill of lading. 
Um, the only thing we will need from you is your V5 certificate. In fact, the most important thing is the VIN number. That's what we need when we put it in the container because we have to put that on the list uh, to let the shipping company know this vehicle is here and that's the VIN number. Um, I think that, that that's about it with the cars. And also, if you are sending a car, you got the opportunity to put some stuffs like your fragile stuffs in the car. Yeah. So long as you don't yeah. fill it to the top that you know nobody can get into it. And to make it at least drivable. Some people have, from my experience, people have given you cars, you know, that are not drivable. They expect you to drive it and drop it in the container and send it for them. So it has to be at least drivable to yes. get in the container because yeah. it will be driven out of the container. Now, people might also ask, if you put a car in there, what else are you putting on top of the car? Yes, we do put stuff on top of the car. However, we use mattresses to yeah. make sure um, everything yeah. is protected. We buy second-hand mattresses and put them on top of it. Um, your sc uh, windscreen, doors, and everything will be protected. Then we put light boxes and, of course, sofas on top of that to protect your car. Yeah, I actually um, experienced something when I was at the port and uh, we were getting our vehicles yeah. out of the container and uh, this right. man, he has a, a, a brand new range and when it came out of the container, it was mashed up. The man was crying. <laughs> I was like, what? Yes. And then when we opened our container... Our vehicle, the windscreen, it was just the windscreen, thankfully, that had broken. And we have mattresses on there. So I would say rather than put one like we did, double them up, you know, put more soft furnishings around there because I think that's something that we learned. It didn't happen to all the vehicles, but especially one. So, yeah. you know, it's something that I think we should be mindful of. So I'm going to go across to you now, um, Edmund. Yeah, thank you for um, being yep. on the show, both of you. I really appreciate you joining us here on Black Fit. Um, I just want to go into, um, obviously, you're um, talking about facilitating, especially storage, um, before, we, before the shipping date. Now, there are certain shipping dates. I'd like you to explain um, the shipping um, debar debarkment date and also the storage and the reason why we need... Um, safe and secure um, storage, which is really important um, to us moving forward. So um, I'd like to explain that part. And also, I want you to talk about the fact that the, the costs in terms of lifting the container, putting the container on the ship, because um, there are other costs, and also the taxes. In terms of left-hand drive and right-hand drives, obviously, in the UK, we've driven on the right-hand side. There are sites, and I think that I can send it to you. I don't know whether you then share it with everybody else. There are sites or just ways to get similar cars because before cars used to cost a lot more money in Europe. But in the past few years, countries like Belgium, Germany, they're all going eco-friendly. So obviously they're getting rid of a lot of diesel cars and old petrol cars. So it's worth looking on the continent. For a lot of people, they, they, they think... Um, it might be a hassle, but for people that have got the time to do it, let's say that you're, you're shipping an expensive car. If it's a car that's not too expensive to change it from right hand to left hand drive, it's not so much of an aggro, it's fine. But if you're spending a lot of money to buy a car, if you spend over £10,000, I'd always advise it. I'd advise to get it from Europe so you don't have to do the change. Although you've got people that can do it, but it's not quite the same. It's not 100%. Let's be honest about it. Yeah. If it's just a car that you need to run around, it's fine. But I'll advise anybody, if it's a car that, if you want to you'd see some left-hand drive cars there. So it's worth looking. In a, you don't even have to go to Europe. You can buy them from Gumtree or eBay or Autotrader even. You can go on Autotrader. If you go on to Extras at the bottom where it says option, type LHD, which is left-hand drive. It will give you the option of all the left-hand drive cars that you get. You'd be surprised of how cheap you can pick them up rather than going on the continent if you don't have time. But there's definitely options to buy them here. I think it saves the hassle of changing it from right to, to left. But equally, it's all good. But I'm saying if you want the option, because I think a lot of people are under the impression that because they see it's Britain, you can't really buy them, but you've got a lot of them. You've got a lot of left-hand draft cars in the UK and people are getting rid of them for reasonable prices. So have a little look. Auto Trader, Gumtree, eBay. Just type in left-hand drive 
once you see some stuff on there. Okay, that's been great. So we've gone through, uh, you know, having an itemized list and packing properly, making sure that you've got a great shipping company to, to ship with, ensuring that facilities are there for storage. Now we're going to come to that all important question over to you, Lamin, on price. So I'm about to ship and uh, I'd like to know how much is it like approximately, obviously, to ship a box? How much is it approximately to ship a barrel? And how much is a 20 foot container, 40 foot container uh, approximately? Plus uh, there are taxes. So I wanted to tell us about all of the fees involved so we don't get any surprises. Okay. So, um, when it comes to fees, um, this depends on, because we got loads of order zippers. I'm, I'm sure Edmond know that uh, we got loads of order zippers uh, here who ship to Gambia too and do the same thing. However, our company will tell you from this price, a box is from 25 pound, depending on the size of the box. We have to come and see the box. And vehicles as well, this is how we charge. We, we tell you vehicles um, like uh, small vehicles are from 600 pound, depending on the size if it's a four by four it's from 900 this is how we do it at k and m shipping now for containers we hire containers from uh, comp uh freight companies to bring them to us to load it and send it we don't hire a container for anybody who wants to do it if you want to do that if you get in touch with us i can tell you contact certain company and speak to them directly if that is what you wish to do by yourself. But, but for us, we will collect uh, your stuffs and get our container and put them in there. You pay us, we take the service and do all the work and send it. You receive it at the other end. That's how we do it. Right. Price-wise, like I said, we will be, you know, we can't all be the same. You know, it's from so price to so price, depending on the size of the item you are sending. That's how we do it at KNM. Okay, excellent. So, um, Emmy Shipping, let's talk to Edmund now. So, you uh, clearly uh, also do shipping, but you do it slightly differently. Um, can you share with us, like, if I was to send a barrel, for example, um, and a, I don't know, uh, some stuff, yeah? Um, how long will it take? And, you know, what would be the approximate cost and what other taxes are there that I have to pay? I think you mentioned um, 150 USD, where in the day from being sort of 75 pounds to 100 pounds or 125 pounds, depending on the size of the barrel. Small boxes for 50 pounds, if I'm not mistaken. And um, I think that's the old price that you'd pay. That's the overall cost that you'd pay. But now you've got extra fees if it's been collected, depending on your location. And I think obviously would also work an element of discount. So say, for instance, you've got somebody that's got 10 boxes. Obviously, there's always room to throw your discount in there, depending on the amount of boxes that you're sending out there. But all you're paying is the fee for the box. That's all you're paying and everything gets delivered to the other side. So it's not additional cost. There's no extra cost. The price that you're getting charged is what you're getting, you're paying from collection to delivery in the Gambia. Clearance and all the rest of it is on the part of the person that's taking care of the shipping. It's not the client that's taking care of the shipping. They don't have to worry about that. So, you know, I'm a very positive person, right? But I've got to err on the side of caution. Has there anything ever happened? Like, yeah, I don't know, the ship going to the wrong location or something like that. Or I, I don't know, you, you know, has anything, and, and do you have to have insurance, Edmund? Yeah, of course. Obviously, from our part, we have to have insurance. It's a must because obviously, say for instance, and you've asked, you shipped your stuff and for one reason or another, let's have it right, things go missing. Okay, then you'd come to me and say, listen, I've paid my money. Where are my goods? So yeah. obviously I think that's why when you've got a list of things, it's in your mind because obviously I'm not going to ask in details the value of everything because I think we're shipping for things to get there. But in my old experience of shipping and I shipped 
the, the whole point of having insurance is that you got a certain amount that's covered. So, for instance, in the day if you send me, he sent two TVs for one reason or another, they didn't turn up. There's always a way that we can look to compensate that, depending on the value of the of the goods. But in general, in general, things don't go missing in containers. You might have things delayed, or you might have a few broken glasses, but that's as far as it goes, really. And obviously, and I think I must emphasize also, that's the reason why giving enough time, sufficient time, is important so that the packages, the packaging is done properly to avoid a lot of things. Because obviously, when we do things in a rush, then things end up accordingly, bad things happen. So it's about preparation, anticipating what's going to happen. Let's get it done properly, do it on time. Let's have a good job done so that you come back and you bring more, more, more people. The more people you recommend, we can grow this thing and help everybody out we help the whole community to move to the gambia at that rate why not so uh lami can you explain to us about the time frame of shipping because obviously if you ship from england and say you're coming over to repatriate and you're going to have to wait for your goods so obviously a good thing is to make sure you've got a suitcase and things that you're going to need that you um bring alongside because you're you're you might, if you ship at the same time, there's going to be a wait. How long approximately does it take to ship from the UK to the Gambia? And how often do the ships leave? Right. Um, from, from my experience, um, it has been always um, a smooth one, you know, quick and, you know, very reliable. However, with the corona issue, things have uh, shifted a little bit. Uh, before the corona, when we send a container, I usually tell people, give it six weeks, even though it takes at least three to four weeks to get to Gambia. Yeah. Six weeks, I'm going to say. Yeah. But just give it six weeks, but at least four weeks, it should be in the Gambia. Excellent, excellent. So this is great because there's an influx and it's going to need more than one company to service all the Black Sit subscribers. Trust me, we, we get... Yeah. We had about 3,000 emails coming. And so I was like, way, hey. And a lot of people are asking about shipping. And so it's important that we're able to provide that service. And so I wanted to recommend, you know, two companies that I know could um, assist and deliver. So you're based in great speaking to you both. I just want some quick tips on um, for you from you, Edwin, on anyone wanting to ship. Just some quick tips that, um, you know, can help the process to be uh, more streamlined and simplified. I'm using your words now. Uh, so if you could give a couple of tips before you go, um, so that the process is, is, is a, a, a really relatively easy one. Okay. Well, quick tips. Um, I think my advice would be organize yourself. Um, give yourself time to pack and pack properly. Get yourself a box, put your things in there, take time and put your things in there in a particular order, just like you did yourself. You know, in the day when you said you had your kitchen stuff, your books and all the rest of it, just to make life a lot easier for yourself. So take the pressure off yourself. And I think you just make life a lot easier for everybody, for yourself mainly. And I just think, find yourself, uh, depending on whether you're shipping, whether it's, you, you, you're going to use a, a, a barrel or you're going to use boxes. And I think depending on whether you're putting in there, give yourself enough time and just pack properly. And then whether it is, if it's TVs, then find boxes to put it in there and find things to protect her around because obviously it's going to contain now. A lot of things get thrown about, not by us, but people that do load them don't have time to be gentle with everything. So I think it's just to double protect yourself, just pack properly. Um, don't rush, don't leave it to the last minute and pack before the things are collected. Just give yourself enough time, pack properly, organize yourself, and everything should be fine. Excellent. And Lamin, any tips? Thank you very much, Edmond, for that. That's a brilliant tip right there. My tip here is um, if you can also add um, the pallet wraps, the black pallet wraps, they're very good to protect boxes and whatever, even TVs, you know, you can, you can put them in the box and still put the pallet wraps on them. It's really, really good because when I first started, I was having boxes or stuffs uh, that will be, you know, going everywhere, like Edmond said, we can do all our best to put them in there, but sometimes the people that load them and that unload them, um, 
don't have time to mess about that much sometimes. So if you use the pallet wrap around them and wrap them up properly, since I started that, the trouble of um, you broke this or something is lost just disappeared, you know, all of a sudden. So that's, that's a good tip, you know, right there for everyone. In terms of um, uh, collecting areas, you just said it before, uh, um, depends what how much you have because we cannot just get up for one customer from here to Leeds let's say or maybe Liverpool from here to Liverpool to go and collect maybe just one customer you know if you pay the money we might actually you know consider going to do that but at least if we have three people to fill our vans up then we can cover the cost of and the time spent to go and collect it so apart from that there's no restriction. Okay, excellent, excellent. Um, so um, my tips, my tips would definitely get bubble wrap, lots of it, and um, cheap yep. blankets, duvet covers. Um, I definitely agree with the black shrimp wrap because people don't know what you're shipping. And put your labeling yep. outside and cover it with sellotape so the stickers can't come off. Yeah, so get lots and lots and lots and lots of tape. And um, with regard to boxes, try and get the boxes which are the most resilient because cardboard boxes tend to break. And then when you empty at the pool, everything just drops out onto the floor. And so if you've got private items in there, not such a good idea. Uh, so <laughs> I definitely would say uh, to be careful. Also give yourself ample time um, I uh, mirror what Edmund said in terms of I mirror what Edmund says in terms of um, being organized and giving yourself enough time and budgeting for shipping. You must budget for shipping in part of your repatriation. So you budget for that flight, that one way flight. You budget for your shipping. You budget for you know if you're going to be staying in rental accommodation or if you're going to be buying a house you know to stay in because some people do because you can just pay part of a deposit and then pay off monthly and you own the house, you know? So, and then while you build, so you own two properties in the space of the time you built one, great. So, you know, you have all those options, but the one thing that I am always calling for is for you to come home, just come home. Now, Lamin, you've been out of here too long. It's time for you to come home too. Edmund, can't wait for you to come back. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> Lavin, you're out in the cold too long. Yeah, out in the cold too long. Yeah. Lavin needs you, okay? Listen, I, can, I cannot wait. You know, those videos that you keep dropping are definitely do it. They're, they're causing damage. I'm on my way. Oh, <laughs> so listen, you know, it's you both, and thank you so much you know, for, for coming on the stream and for sharing with us and for giving us a lot of tips and guidance about shipping because we want people to come without hassle. So I'm going to be sharing both your contact details and um, between you both, I'm sure you'll be able to manage uh, the black six subscribers that are coming and there are many, 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 many. <laughs> so get ready for the flow, yeah? Wow. Because many are coming, especially November, December, which is why I'm doing the show now, so that um, they're actually planning. So, you know, be ready. Lots are coming in January, February, March, and they're coming on one-way tickets. So they're definitely coming. So it's time to leave the West, come back to the best. So thank you both for coming on to Blacksit. Appreciate your time, your expertise, your intelligence, and your great looks. So, yeah, and your great company. So thank you so much. And um, I'll share with you when we've edited. And Blacksit family, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you um, for um, watching, sharing, and subscribing. Don't forget to smash that like button and um, comment down below. And ding-a-ling-a-ling, ding-a-ling-a-ling, ding-a-ling-a-ling-ling-ling-ling. -ling 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 -ling. Don't forget to press that <laughs> bell, okay? and for all so you can see all of our programs, to all of our supporters via PayPal, and also Patreon, to all of our lovely, lovely Patreon supporters and all our gorgeous, gorgeous PayPal supporters. We want to say thank you. We want you to know that the drone has arrived. 
So now is my new task is actually learning how to fly one. So you'll be seeing those adventures, hopefully in the next few programs and also um, the new land opportunities that are coming up that are phenomenal. So um, please stay tuned and um, keep liking, keep sharing. One nation, one Africa. Thank you, Blacksit family. Please keep watching, please subscribing, and remember, follow your dreams. Purchase your tracks today.